Hi guys, here is another video about making a Valgatti. We've been filming it for 3 months, but in the end the vehicle looks more or less like a car, though only the rear part so far. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Enjoy the video. A year ago, in one of our previous videos, we started working on the rear lights. Back then we needed their foam to finish the rear bumper. We used a 3D model to cut them out of wood, in particular pier and maple. We used pier wood to make fine details, and maple was used to fill the male volume. We picked them according to the properties of the types of wood. In the end, after a day of work, we made this set of bricks. So it was time to move on. We used the same technology, a CNC machine and wood. We made the inner parts. We're gonna need them later to create the counterpart and make a tricky matrix. But for now, we've spent a few hundred hours for gluing, finishing and polishing. The next stage, when all the elements are ready, we prime them. After that, we patch it, rub it, plane it out, and repeat it a couple of times. After a few hundred days, we have these perfect blanks, but wooden ones so far. But we need them to be transparent and made of plastic. To make them, we need silicon mattresses. That's why we made these boxes. And now we silicon them and thumb them around. We're gonna pour the silicon into these boxes. Here's where we're gonna cast the lights. And now we're gonna prepare these blanks for molding. We need to sand and polish the polyprimer and then apply the release box. With this polyprimer, we'll try to sand away all the nuances, chagrin and other defects. As usual, we're gonna use defect detection powder. Polishing and sanding. I've already shaved off the chagrin with 320 grits in paper. Then I used a softer 600 grit sponge and carefully sanded it with my pal. We've breaking the grooves. Then we sand it with even finer grit. In this case, I'm gonna stop at 1000 grit. And after that, I'm gonna wax it. We're gonna use the defect detection powder again. The next step is to apply the wax separator to help the mold separate. In this case, we're gonna use solid wax. We polish the piece with it. After the piece is properly waxed, we need to place it in the formwork, but in such a way that it doesn't touch the walls. To do this, we glue it to the wooden stoppers and put it in the formwork. We do this with all the pieces. The reason to do this is to spread silicon across the whole volume evenly. And in the end, after solidifying, we're gonna have a solid reusable matrix. Finally, we move on to the silicon itself. This is a two-component compound designed specifically to create molds. Great stuff, would totally recommend it. I'll leave a link in the description. It's pretty easy with the main lights. We just pour it in and let them to dry. But the central narrow element is pretty complicated. We decided to make the silicon matrix in two parts. The first part is already poured in, and the part is already half submerged in silicon. Now we're gonna apply the separating wax to prevent two halves from sticking together. We need to make funnels. We're gonna use plastic tube through which we're gonna pour plastic. And we also need outlets to let the air out. We're gonna use these hot melt adhesive rods. Let's get to work. While Andrew gets to work, I'm gonna spoil it a little. This whole work with the central light turned out to be a waste of time, because we changed our plan and we had to change the technology. And all these buckets of silicon, Andrew hours and on-camera explanations were thrown away. But Andrew doesn't know about it yet. Let's listen to him. We removed these wooden planks which held the piece. 
since it didn't touch the bottom of the box. It was suspended on these wooden planks. The pieces waxed and our tubes fell off. But that's okay, we're gonna glue it to the same spot and it'll stay glued when we remove the wax. These are glued properly. <laughs> Not. The next step is to apply the release agent on the dry layer of silicon. We use wax spray. Next, we pour another bucket of silicon. The next day, the silicon is dry and we finally unpacked our Christmas present. Though, according to Andrew's reaction, he is not thinking about Christmas at all. We disassemble the foam wax, and you can clearly see here how this technology works. I have to admit that it turned out to be perfect. We can easily make such complex forms, but unfortunately not in this case. Initially we planned to pour molded plastic there, then dye it and create the piece this way. But later our plans have changed. Though, we still plan to make the main light this way. The technology is the same, but the shape is simpler. Or rather, it's simple now. We're gonna change that. At this point we have a mold of the external part of the light. But of course, the case have to be hollow. That's why we assemble the foam work again. Put the piece there and finish the inner counterpart, which should fit in the silicon mold. But it's not that simple either. The original Bugatti lights have this label. We're still working on the blank for our future lights. The next step is to glue the label here. The original label says Bugatti. We're gonna write Valgatti, of course. This task is quite complex. I have to glue tiny letters over here. They're cut out of 2mm polycarbonate. I also should avoid gluing my fingers together and ruining the blanks with the glue. I have no idea how I'm gonna do it, but I'm sure it's not gonna be simple. Yeah, it's not simple at all. But the funny thing is that this work also turned out to be useless. Actually, while working on it, we realized that it can be done much easier. We're gonna have the letters, of course, but we're gonna place it on the inner element. It's gonna be much easier and you won't see the difference. But we'll get to that a little later. My approach to it is very precise. Now we have to make the same elements, but out of silicon. To do this, we create a mold out of silicon to create another mold out of silicon. I don't even know how to explain it. I let Andrew figure it out himself. The silicon is solid. Let's unpack it. I'm always very nervous and excited while unpacking, because something could go wrong. Something could ruin the piece. But we can find it out only after unpacking. We remove the black matrix out of the matrix, because it's just an intermediate stage. Next, we're gonna pour silicon inside to make this piece but out of silicon, to insert the silicon piece in this matrix, to cast a solid piece of transparent color epoxy piece. So it's pretty complicated. The thing I realized while working with silicon, when I cast this piece of the light this way, the piece was hanging in the upper part. And when you pour the silicon, the bubbles in the silicon, they push against the counterpart of the light and let's just admit that the shape is not perfect, it has a lot of bubbles. But then, when I was making the piece, it was at the bottom and I poured the silicon from above and this way the bubbles went up. It seems obvious, but you realize it only after a few ruined projects, it become clear, but much later. Here's the first silicon mold. Here are the bubbles stuck in the piece because it was suspended and they were trapped there. And here's the second piece. All the bubbles remain here. Here they are. Yeah, sure, we need a degasser, but we'll get back to it later. But little by little, we're moving forward, learning new stuff about making silicon molds. We're gonna cast this silicon thing into this mold this piece. We're gonna hang it over here and there's the space between them. We're gonna pour colored epoxy resin there to finally create the light and be happy. Some preparation before pouring it. I made this mold using the simple method with single-use foam work. I think this way we can save a lot of time and effort this way. Let's even it out. And to stop it from bloating while pouring, we're gonna hold it with these slats and clamps. 
the clamps are refusing to work properly, but the duct tape did a great job. I came up with a structure to suspend the matrix in the matrix. I used a thermo glue to stop it from surface, because the base is made of wood, and the silicon will try to push it to the surface, and the through holes to make it a uniform solid piece. We put it in a thin stream aiming at one spot. Let's apply the release agent, I guess. The silicon solidified, and it's time to open it to see what happened. I'm really excited to unpack. So I'd like to remind you about our long way we've been through to create just one light. We made a wooden blank, the counterpart to it that went inside, three matrices, the matrix, the matrix reloaded, and the matrix revolutions, which will be inserted here. And we're gonna put color epoxy resin here. And that's how we're gonna make the rare light. After all this long, complicated work, which even the Wachowski sisters would sympathize with, we finally can get to the fun part. We apply the release agent to the silica, combine component A with component B for the Ekavana resin. To add a red dye, by rule of thumb so far, and stir it thoroughly. This is a test pour, which will help us to evaluate all the nuances and the final result. Based on that, we're gonna conduct some color tests, color the resin properly, and then we'll cast the perfect light in the vacuum chamber. At least we hope so. We prepare the resin for casting the lights. This time we decided to degas it. We've built this simplest vacuum unit from scratch. This is a compressor from a refrigerator. We've made a resin trap from plastic boxes. If the process gets out of hand, it will trap the resin and prevent it from going to the compressor and ruin it. Here. And here's the container where the degassing will take place. We put the resin into the bucket while leaving some space for the foam, the bubbles. We put it in the container, close it with a transparent lid, and turn the unit on. Meanwhile, it's been 200 days. He's been sanding and finishing the body. Before applying the final layer of the liquid putty, we disassemble the body as much as possible and go to the paint shop. We mixed a few pounds of liquid putty and applied evenly to the body. This compound is designed to finish large surfaces and get a very smooth body panel. We can use a putty knife to spread an even layer across the whole body, but it's really easy when you use an airbrush. Later, using a huge pad or a block, we polish it, and in the end we're gonna have smooth sides, roof and side skirts. No defects. This compound dries pretty fast. A day later, we could move on. It's time to work on the splitter, or whatever they called. We didn't make them right in the matrix, so that it won't be too complex. We would have to make it in separate parts, so we decided to make them later. We just made these plates, and now we're gonna glue them where they belong. Much later, we're gonna make them out of carbon. But that's for the next video. In the end, we glued these things in the pre-designed slots, we strengthened them with glass fiber, enlarged the surface, they're located and went to the paint shop again.
As you can remember, we recently applied liquid yellow and brown putty. A few Andrew days of polishing were off screen. In the end, the body is perfect. Or so Andrew claims. The next stage is to apply the primer. This time we applied two layers of it. The first layer is grey. It's a standard grey primer. Color the second layer a little, to show you at least something that resembles the final car, more or less. Of course, it's not the final paint job, but at least it's not grey and boring anymore. In the original car, the lower part was made of carbon. We'll do the same, but later. Now we just zone it, painting it black. We do this to show you the result visually close to the original. We're gonna put all the elements on and evaluate the result at the end of the video. To do this, we need to get a decorative nozzle for the exhaust pipe. In the original car, it's made out of aluminium. We're gonna get it with the help of a lab, our subscriber and a cool craftsman. We've made a replica out of polystyrene, tried it on, adjusted, packed it and sent him 3000 miles away from us. We've been working hard on the matrix of the central light out of silicon. We wanted to make it out of castable plastic. We've spent quite a lot of time and effort, but then we slept on it and realized that it's too boring for us. And we want to make something more fun. In the end, we've decided to make the central part out of carbon and we need another matrix. This one won't do. We're gonna make this matrix using a different technology, using fiberglass, so that we can the piece out of forged carbon. It's too bad we spent so much time and effort on that one. But let's not dwell on that, let's start making the new matrix. It should be much more fun. We couldn't make so many silicon deal for women's day. It's better than these boring tulips for two bucks. We had to glue the piece, because it broke while I removed it from silicon. It's alright, super glue helped us out. Now let's make another thumb to make a matrix. We're making a stand for the piece to make that work easier. We made these blocks, fixed them with hot melt glue. Here we go. We're gonna make it the easy way, we're not gonna have any foam work, since we're gonna have a one-use piece, a single-use matrix. This will save us some time. We applied at least 5 layers of solid wax, then we polish it with a soft cloth. We polish the wax with a soft cloth and let's start applying the gel coat. Let me remind you that this gel requires proper steering. If you fail to do it, you may get a defect on the matrix like crocodile skin. When you apply polyester resin, it's gonna bust. And you're gonna have this ugly defect that you'll have to fix by sanding or putting. So let's steer the gel properly. I remind you that to apply gel coat, it's better to use an old brush that has all the extra hair fill out, that already molted, so that it won't leave its hairs on our piece. And it should be as soft as possible to prevent scratches on the release layer, to prevent the damage. Our next step, before casting the glass mat, we need to work on these little edges and folds. Since glass mat is not gonna be applied here properly, it's gonna have bubbles, so we have to even them out somehow. How are we gonna solve this problem? We can tear glass mat into these thin lines and place it on these problematic places to even out the shape. But it takes a lot of time and effort, so we'll use this hairy putty. We'll apply the fiberglass putty all over it to even out all the edges. There's an outer edge. We're gonna even it out with hairy putty too. It's gonna make my work with the matrix much easier. 
I'm about to start mixing our secret filler. This is a glass filled, or as I call it, hairy patty. To make it stronger, we can add a little polyester resin. Here we go. This way we're killing two birds with one stone. First of all, the patty will be thinner and it'll be easier to apply it, but it's gonna be much stronger. Don't forget to add that heart in it. You have to add 2% of it. The perfect proportion is to finish a can of patty and a tube of heart in it at the same time. Now we patty our groove. The best patty knife is your finger. Here we go. Oh, nice. So I'll explain one more time what we're doing. The previous silicone matrix won't work in this case, so we're making another one, a classic one, out of glass metal. We applied a gel coat in it, then we filled the most difficult and delicate space with putty. In the end we covered it with fiberglass and left it to dry. At the time the package finally reached the addressee. As you know, his name is Oleg. Apparently, he didn't think too hard about his workshop's name. It's called Olego Customs. <laughs> That's funny. All in all, welding aluminium is not an easy task. But luckily for us, Oleg specializes in welding of exhaust systems from stainless steel and titanium. We also weld their intake systems from aluminium and titan. He makes custom parts from almost any material. In our case, it's a decorative puzzle. In the original car, it's made the same way. That is, the piece is installed on the bumper just for decor. The exhaust goes through it without connection. After installing the right kind of exhaust pipe, the project will look much better, but more on that later. At this point, Oleg finished the aluminium piece, made according to our styrofoam model, and sent it to us. Now it's time to do the unboxing. As you can see, I reinforced a little bit. You might think that it's just a stand for the matrix, but it's not. All the U-shaped pieces, when the resin dries, they shrink and bend. So these side walls, they stretch. And to avoid this, I installed these plywood supports that will prevent this wall from collapsing and folding. Now we're gonna remove the dummy from the matrix. I predict that we're gonna break it, because this shape is complex. It has this groove in the middle. It's gonna be fun, let's go. This is the main difference between soft silicon mold from the solid fiberglass one. But as you remember, we changed the rules of the game. And this time we need this solid mold with an upper load. And at this point the self-fulfilling prophecy came true and our glued wooden master model broke. But that's okay, because we managed to make a matrix out of it. Even two. That's when we got a long-awaited package. But not the one you are thinking about. The LEGO Customs delivery is still on the way. This is the Fusion delivery. We'll need all these things to work on carbon properly. We'll explain the technology in the next video. Here is the carbon. Let's start making the rear light. Or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's gonna shine, so it's a light. The rear central light. Uh, what have we done? We've made a matrix. Then we use translucent polyester gel coat. Here. It is applied here. Then we're gonna put carbon there. We cut it with a hand. We're gonna use three kinds of it. This one is 8 ounce clip. This one is 40 ounce clip. And this one is different. I forgot what it is. Okay. Then we're gonna use the polyester resin, not epoxy. Yeah. We're gonna against the rules. 
we apply polyester to resin and carefully insert the forged carbon. Then, to remove all the bubbles, we're gonna use this handmade in 15 minutes rollout of an electrode and 3mm shims. We're gonna use it all over the piece. Of course, I'm gonna do this without any visual guidance, because I can see the front side. I'll do it by touch and by ear. Let's go! I think you can see the process pretty clearly. Based on his sense of taste or lack like thereof, Andrew put the cut carbon piece by piece, mixing different sizes. Here's the second version of our saber. It's dried up. We detected some defects in the first one. We adjusted the process. And using this experience, we made another one. What did we change in technology? We made this one out of carbon pieces of different sizes. 8 ounce, 14 ounce. Yeah, and this one was made with the carbon we used uh, when making the backlit carbon hood. By the way, watch this video. Uh, over here. It's gonna be here. Of course, we can't use such big cuts on a piece so thin. It won't look nice. That's why I tore it into these little pieces to cover this lip-shaped thinny. Then I applied black gel coat to make it less transparent. Since the piece is very thin, it actually lets the light through. I've got an idea to cover it with black gel coat. And I've got a feeling that it's finally worked out. Let's get it out. Before removing it from the matrix, we can use a flap disc to cut the excess. Then it's gonna be almost finished when we get it out. So, I can wait to unpack it to see what's inside. Well, at the first glance, it's just black because it's matte. Let's soak it with a degreaser. We had to make three pieces to get a more or less decent result. The next stage will be making this central part with lights. There has to be a red strip with lights, which will basically be the tail lights. We tried a thing, we cut out the central part out of it to install the glass directly into the piece, so to say, to make it jointless. Yeah, it's not that easy to make the glass. We need to make it matte to hide the LED strip, namely diodes themselves. Now we'll try to make the idea come true. We need to mix aerosol with casting resin and color it. Aerosol is a resin thickener with glass micro shavings, basically dust. And using it, we're gonna get the result we need. The casting resin will be the base. We add thickener by proportion. 2%. Red dye. Okay, let's check out the color. So, our eggnog is ready. Now we need to apply this magic compound. A thick layer, I think, around 0.1 inch. If I manage to do it properly manually, apply it evenly. When it solidifies, I want to believe that we're gonna have translucent glass. I believe many of you are wondering, is this the right solution for the taillight? Yeah, it looks kinda weird, but the thing is that the original looks the same. Here, check this out. Weird, non-transparent matte inset. This is clearly visible against the background of the red lights on both sides. Jumping ahead a bit, I should say we did just that, and the result is identical with the original. We should also know that this is a test sample to figure out all the nuances, and then make additional mattresses and create the final piece. And while this thing is drying, unsuspecting Andrew received the delivery.
in the end, after speedy delivery from Oleg, the pieces are starting to come together. It's finally time to find out if we managed to make a shell for our light. Initially, we didn't think much of this first experiment, since we're used to initial failures and blunders. This is an experimental piece to see if we're moving in the right direction, and whether we should change the technology. And we were pleasantly surprised because our test sample turned out to be quite good. We are very happy about the result. Later we're gonna cast these lights considering a few nuances and we're gonna get perfect pieces for sure. And in order to show you the assemble the match I promised, we polished the lights and prepared to apply the glossy varnish. We do the same with the carbon piece. We polish it as best as we can and remove minor defects and then we apply varnish to all of the pieces. While varnish is drying, we are prepared the final piece of the puzzle. I'm talking about grids for the rear bumper. First, we cut them out of cardboard. We cut it using our laser machine. We check if it fits, and it is. This means that we can cut them out of plastic. At this point many of you may have a question. Why is the grid so flat in 2D? I have the same question, to be honest. But the fact is the original looks the same. Like, subscribe and comment this video. Thank you for watching and catch positive attacks from the axe.